So I guess I'm uh, finishing off the bald guy section of the presentation today. Um, so when I was a kid, my parents yanked me out of school. I was about eight years old. They yanked my sister and I out of school. And they moved us down to Mexico, where um, they threw us into a Catholic school. Um, we were the only North Americans in town, all the only North American kids in the school. We didn't speak a lick of Spanish. So as you can imagine, it was pretty tricky to make friends. Um, in fact, on my walk home, for the first month or so on my walk home, often the uh, other schoolboys would throw rocks at me. So it was a little bit of a tricky time, but I learned a great deal. And when I got back home um, to Canada, back in school, when new kids came to my school, I always felt the need to befriend them because I knew what they were going through. Uh, I had been there. Uh, I had developed empathy. And uh, now that I'm an old guy, I, I kind of realized that empathy is a really crucial thing to have learned in life. It's, it's, it's crucial for interpersonal relationships, for business success. And in the last five years, I've also learned that it's really important for driving digital adoption of your fancy new technologies. So um, uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. So here's what my clients tell me, my banking clients. They, they often call and say, so we rolled out a great new technology that are going to make our customers' lives so much better, but not as many people are using it as we'd like. What can you guys do to help us? And so I always think, well, the first thing we've got to do is understand what the hurdles are for the customer. And, and we, we need to understand what's stopping them from using it. And that's where empathy comes in, obviously, pretty handy. Um, two seconds about me. I founded LaunchFire in 1999 as a digital marketing company. About five years ago, one of our banking clients contacted us and said, can you help us with our digital transformation initiative, specifically with driving app adoption? And we said, sure. We didn't really know what they were talking about, but we thought we could do it. And we implemented our first project, and it actually was pretty successful. Uh, since then, we've been really fortunate to work with a number of other FIs and other businesses that have the similar challenge. And we've kind of developed a recipe that uh, seems to be working. Um, so in the last few years, we've built um, a couple of platforms into which we've kind of baked all the ingredients of this recipe. Um, and I'll share those with you today. And the first one I want to talk about is sort of a two-pronged approach. So um, you obviously need to engage your customers and educate them about the, the app and or the, whatever technology it is and how it's going to benefit their lives. That's a given. Um, the part that sometimes gets overlooked is the frontline staff, the people who need to support it. These people um, need a certain amount of knowledge about the products to be able to support it confidently. Um, because after all, in your case, you're trying to get people to change their banking habits, which is pretty tricky, right? get people to change how they do things. A lot of people have just a fundamental aversion to change. When I think of change, I often think of like a change age conversion scale where, where age is on the x-axis and change is on the y-axis. And when you're first born, you're really young, you're, you're willing to try anything. I mean, you'll drink out of the toilet, for goodness sakes. But as you age, your willingness to change drops off. And somewhere between 40 and 50, it goes right off a cliff. So if you're trying to convert you know, baby boomers or Gen Xers like me, uh, it can be pretty tricky. Um, and that's where I think it's really crucial to involve your frontline staff. Um, so when we first did our first project on driving adoption, we actually went out and talked to a bunch of frontliners to understand, well, what's the problem? Why, why, can't they, why can't they promote this stuff? And so we'll start with that. So the first thing, we came up with sort of three things, three bits of feedback that we got from frontliners. The first one was they were worried about job security. You know, if I, if I get all these people, all the customers using this app, who's going to come in and see me? What am I going to do? I'm going to work myself out of a job. And of course, nobody wants to do that. Um, but interestingly, there are a couple of things that we can, we can, we can help them with, we can address, ways we can address that. Um, our client in Canada, TD Bank, who's actually a client in Canada and the US, um, they told us that they could save $100 million a year by firing people. But last year, they estimated that they made an, an additional billion dollars with their frontline staff who deepened relationships with customers and actually sold more product. Um, and so, that kind of messaging you need to convey to these folks. And then the other thing is employees who resist becoming uh, modern digital savvy employees are probably the most expendable at a bank. And so we try to encourage people to become valuable by getting up to speed on that stuff. And these are messages that, um, as a bank, I think you really need to push out to your folks um, to overcome this aversion. And the next one is um, they say that they have a lack of training. They often feel that um, when they're rolling out a new technology, they're sort of left in the dark. 
new technology comes out, customers come in, ask about it. They, they've never used it. They don't know what. They don't know how to support it. They feel really uh, sort of naked out there. Um, and so we need to address a lack of training. And that problem kind of begets the next one, which is they lack the confidence um, to evangelize these products. And, and that kind of makes sense. I mean, you don't really, nobody wants to recommend a product with which they're not familiar. Um, you know, I think of, uh, I think of example, like I, I, I'm, I like to cook and I, I like to eat healthily. And um, my wife sent me a video of this little tool that you can take your zucchini and twist it in and it makes actually zucchini pasta. And I thought, that's pretty cool. But I didn't actually buy the product. She was so convinced I'd like it that she bought it for me. Um, and I, after I used it and I tasted zucchini pasta, which by the way doesn't taste any different from regular pasta, but you don't feel super bloated after, I was like, this is an amazing product. So of course, I told my friends about it. It's because I'd experienced it. I understood how it benefited my life. I knew it was easy. And I now I have a couple friends who own it. Well, that's what we need to create in our frontline staff. So those are the problems. We'll get into uh, the recipe that we've been using. Uh, I'll share it with you guys, and maybe it can work for you. So the first thing is um, game-based learning. So um, most employees at banks tell us that their training sucks, uh, that it's boring, that it's static. And I think to myself, oh, that's the opposite of empathetic. Um, so what we try to do is uh, implement game-based learning. And by game-based learning, I don't mean gamification, which is a fancy buzzword. But gamification essentially means taking game elements like um, badges or leaderboards or whatever and tacking them onto your existing content. So imagine a PDF and I finish reading it and I get a badge. Well, that doesn't address the fundamental problem, which is a PDF is boring um, and your delivery mechanism sucks. So even if I tack those elements on, maybe they'll read two more PDFs, but the PDF isn't going to train them any more effectively, and they're certainly not going to come back and do it a second time. Game-based learning, on the other hand, what we do is take the content and morph it into a game so that while they're playing, they're learning, um, and they learn through play, and it's kind of fun. Um, and this has been really successful for teaching that foundational knowledge, like product knowledge, product benefits, that kind of stuff. So that's the first piece of the recipe. The second one is challenge-based simulators. I say challenge-based because I'm differentiating from what a lot of our banking clients are doing, which is um, building simulators that are basically guided tours. They've got a blinking light, uh, tells you where to click each time. Uh, I don't think that's a very effective way to train people. And the reason I say that is um, the analogy I give is you're driving a friend home, they're sitting in the passenger seat and they're telling you how to get there. And so you get them home, no problem. Next time you go pick them up, you actually don't know how to get there. That's because while you were driving them home, you let your mind do other things like get upset about the fact that they don't have a license and you always have to drive them around or um, what you're going to pick out on when you get home. But you're not thinking about actually driving them home. So you didn't actually learn. That's what the guided tours do. You'll get through the task, but you don't know how to do it. So what we do and what we recommend doing is turning it into a challenge. So for example, you could say send, send a $200 e-transfer to your mom in 20 seconds. So you go in and try to do it. And each time you make a mistake, you lose a life. If you lose three lives, you're done, you have to start over. What we found is by doing this, it makes it a challenge, makes it more fun for people, and they actually do it multiple times. And it's that repetition that gets them comfortable with the app, and, and once they're comfortable, then they can be confident recommending it because they're not worried that a customer is gonna come in and say, how do I use their app? Oh, I don't know. And it's, it's even particularly bad if you recommended it and you don't know how to use it. So challenge-based simulators have been working really well at driving that repetition. So they've got foundational knowledge on, on on the product's benefits, they understand how to use it. The last piece is role play scenarios where they get a chance to practice recommending the product in a simulated real world environment. So in this case, you get a customer comes in, he's got a challenge or he's, he's got a transaction he wants to do. And your job in playing this game is to figure out how to take the conversation towards a digital product so that you can recommend it. And there, are not, there aren't necessarily right and right, wrong answers. There's just answers that are better than others, just like in real life. Um, and so you want to naturally guide that conversation to the point where you can recommend a digital product without seeming overly salesy and, and really in a way that you, it's understood that you're trying to help this person benefit and make their lives easier. So that's kind of the recipe um, that we've been using. The last piece is... Um, how do we get, keep people coming back to this training and playing it more and more? So this is um, a narrative game that is kind of like the, the glue of all of the content. And it's built in the image of the most addictive social and, and uh, mobile games. 
So in this case, you start and you have a, you have a tiny little bank um, in level one, and your goal is to grow that into a gleaming downtown tower. And you do so by taking the training programs that are built as simulators, as game-based learning, and as uh, role-play scenarios. And the better you do in those, the more you earn, and you can take those earnings, and then you can purchase upgrades for your bank, just like you'd buy in any game. But in this case, the upgrades are all tied to your digital products. So as you browse the upgrades to figure out how to make your bank grow faster, you're actually learning about the various different digital transformation initiatives that the bank has and how they benefit the customer and how they benefit the bank. So you're getting sort of a 360 view of the bank's digital transformation through playing this game. So it makes it kind of fun to acquire this knowledge. I see I have the blinking light, so I'm going to rip through. Of course, this is the point where we add all of the gamification elements, leaderboards, badges, all that kind of stuff, because it belongs in this area on these uh, sort of on the narrative game. It doesn't really belong tacked onto crappy old training, essentially. Um, I have only talked about the um, employee engagement and training side because uh, I only had 15 minutes. But the customer side, we use a similar approach, and that is to um, build marketing programs that engage your customer base and make it fun for them to learn about your products and how they're going to benefit their lives. Because ultimately, if it's just a banner ad or something, nobody really cares. But if you make it fun, they'll actually pay attention and learn a little bit. So thanks very much for your time. I'm, I'm out of time. <laughs>